Do you want to be financially free through real estate investing? Do you want to have the life of your dreams or even spend more time with your family? Well, real estate can actually do that for you. I'm gonna break down everything you're going to need to know to buy your first rental property in 2021. And I'm actually gonna share with you in a ninja way that you can buy your first property without using any of your own money. Let's get into it. The first thing you're going to need to do is to get pre-approved by a bank. And if you actually stay until my ninja strategy, you, you don't need a bank at all. A pre-approval is basically just a letter that the bank gives to you that you can give out to the seller to the home and show that, hey, I actually have proof that I can secure these funds to buy the property from you. And so before you do that, before you actually just settle for one bank, you're going to want to call every single local bank that there is and some of the bigger banks. And why is that? That's because different banks have different, you know, different things that they're looking for and different rates. So if you call a bank and one of them is like, "Hey, we'll give you an actually we'll give you a 5% interest rate." And you call a, another local bank and like, "Hey, we'll actually give you a 4% interest rate." Well, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take that first 5% interest rate and you're going to take that letter to another bank and you're basically going to negotiate like, hey, can you beat these terms? And if they're like, yes, we can actually beat your terms, um, we're going to give you a 4% interest rate instead of this other bank giving you a 5%. And then that saves you hundreds and hundreds of dollars every single month and sometimes thousands of dollars every single year. And there's some things that I, that you need to know about whenever you are getting pre-approved for a loan. It's going to drop your credit score, Bob, by about on average four points. Well, here is a secret strategy that not a lot of people know about. Yeah, whenever you apply for a bank, yeah, it's gonna drop your credit score by about four points because it's a hard inquiry. After the first time a bank pulls your credit, you have about 14 days to actually shop around to for different mortgages, different mortgage rates, and it doesn't affect your credit score at all. You can just be like, hey, well, can you do this? Hey, you can pull my credit, that's okay. Because it's not gonna drop your credit score anymore because according to the credit bureaus, it's applying for mortgage and they actually want you to shop around for mortgage rates because 5%, that's that's a lot for a primary residence. And for an investment property, eh, it's okay. Um, and then you can get a 4%, 3%, and maybe even a 2%. And so you wanna shop around for all these different places because going from a 5% to a 2% on a $300,000 home, like here in Colorado Springs, that's literally going to save you probably 200 to $300 every single month. So that's exactly why you want to shop around. Again, save you $100 or more. Next thing you need to do is you need to get deals, deal flow and have deals coming to you every single day. And how do you do that? Well, here's what you're going to do. You're actually going to call around to different real estate, uh, real estate agents, about three to five per city that you're wanting to either invest in or buy a property in. And you're going to ask them, hey, I want to be on an automatic email listing, meaning whenever a property hits the market, it's gonna be sent to your email every single time. And the reason why you wanna call about three to five different agents, that's because some agents, they're hungry. They want your business. So they're gonna put you on this automatic email listing within the hour. I've actually had some agents put me on an automatic email listing within 30 minutes. And I've actually had some agents put me on a listing maybe a few days after. Well, that few days after, I could have found a deal. And so that's what I'm meaning. You need to call about three to five different agents, have them put you on automatic email listings because all agents are different. And sometimes even their software that they use will send out a, um, a, the automatic email to you a little bit later than someone else. And that time is crucial because real estate, it's a fast paced game. You need to go, go, go whenever a property hits the market because within 24 hours, if it's a good deal, it's gonna be gone. Whenever you call these agents and tell them, hey, I wanna be set up for an automatic email listing, they're going to ask you a few questions. One of those questions being, what is your criteria for properties? Now, here's what I wanna want you to say. Hello, Mr. Real Estate Agent. Could you set me up with an automatic email listing of a, a minimum or a maximum purchase price of $200,000? Again, this criteria, it's it's based off of where you are and what prop, or what cities you're going to invest in. So my maximum my maximum purchase price is, you know, $200,000. My minimum bedrooms I want to invest in is three bedrooms, minimum baths, two bedrooms, uh, minimum square footage of 1,000 square feet. And what they're going to do is they're just basically gonna put this in their software and every time a property hits on market with your specific criteria, it's going to send you an automatic email. Well, here is a side note that I you really need to do because I made this horrible mistake. 
is you need to get notified every time a property hits the market, not at the end of the day. Because I've had, whenever I was starting out, I've had agents that would set me up with an automatic email listing that it will send me all the properties that hit the market that day. Well, if the property hits the market and you're getting notified at the end of the day, well, let's say it hit the market at 8 a.m. and you're not getting notified until 5 p.m. Well, now real estate agents aren't gonna go view the property till the next day. Well, that means Basically, 24 hours later, you're actually going to see the property with the real estate agent. And that means other real estate investors and people that want to buy the house have already seen it. They've already put offers in on it. And so you're actually fighting an uphill battle. And the agents might even ask you some other questions like, you know, what zip code, what neighborhoods do you want to have this criteria set for? Well, you don't want that right now. You just want properties hitting your email inbox every single day. Yes, whenever you're more an experienced real estate investor, and you can actually look at this stuff after the fact, after they send you the automatic email uh, of the property, you can actually see what kind of neighborhood it really is. So you don't need to do that right away. But whenever you're a more real, uh, experienced real estate investor, that's whenever you can actually tell these agents, hey, this is the neighborhood, this is the zip code I actually want to invest in and nothing more. Hey, if you got value out of it, hit that like button. Now, that was on market properties. Let's dive in deep to off market properties because that's where you're going to find the best deals. Where I want you to go to find off market properties is actually a website called foreclosure.com. And there's gonna be a link in the description down below for these off market properties. We're gonna go over to foreclosure.com right now. So this is exactly how you're going to find some off market properties and some great deals. So we're going to actually go over to Colorado Springs, Colorado, because that's where I'm living right now. That's actually where I'm investing my high in a high appreciation market, which is fantastic living here because I can just live here. I'm also in the military, so 0% down and just let the market appreciate and then cash out on some great deals. Well, I actually wanna find some properties that have equity inside them as well. So let's go over here to, let's just, let's type in foreclosures, pre-foreclosures, because honestly, Pre-foreclosures, if you don't know the, the foreclosure process, I talk about foreclosures on this, uh, this YouTube channel all the time. So you can go ahead and check out any single video that I have made about foreclosures and I'll, it'll, it'll explain the whole process. But anyways, a pre-foreclosure is basically a property that has been issued a no-so default. The homeowner has been issued a no-so default and the bank hasn't actually taken back the property yet. So this is a key thing that we can do is we can find out who's in the pre-foreclosure process. The bank hasn't taken it back yet. So we can go and talk to these homeowners face to face, go and talk to them directly, help them out of a situation that can potentially be horrible for them. Meaning it drops their, if they actually get foreclosed on, drop their credit score by at least 50. That foreclosure will be on their record for about seven years. So I just clicked on a random one. And you can see that the estimated market value is $230,000. Well, here's also another market value. This is what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to go off of what foreclosure.com says the market value is. You need to contact your real estate agent they're actually working with, be like, hey, can you run a CMA on this property's address? And what they're going to do is they're just going to take that property, they're going to run it against other properties that have sold in the last six to 12 months and they're going to basically tell you an average what the property could sell for if it's fixed up exactly like this. And that's whenever you're investing in pre-foreclosures, foreclosures, and post-foreclosures, that's, that's the risk you run into is it's hard to tell how much rehab is going to go into it. We're going to scroll down here. There's some key information I want to show you. Mortgage balance, $270,000. Well, this property is probably not a good deal because the mortgage balance is $270,000. That means the person, the person that, uh, let's see if it has a name, defendant's name right here, this person right here will not probably sell it to you lower than $270,000. Well, if we're taking off a of face value and what the property, what uh, foreclosure.com is saying the property is worth, $268,000, well, that's obviously less than what their mortgage balance is left. So they're probably not going to sell it to you lower than this. It's probably not a great deal. Again, I just clicked on this property and I found out, hey, it's not a great deal. Let's let's not go for it. But as you can see, we're going to go back. You can see that uh, I think it's a 200 and something properties, 261 pre foreclosures. That's 261 potential deals that you can find and go buy. And so Again, I've said this in one of my previous videos, is if you buy a property for 10% equity, meaning if you're, you have, 
if you can buy a property for three hundred thousand dollars and it's actually worth three hundred and thirty thousand dollars that's that ten percent equity spread well now the property is going to appreciate another 10% because that's what we're actually seeing here in Colorado Springs right now on average over the past five years is a 10% appreciation gain. Well, that 10%, that's another $33,000. Well, well, you just snapped your fingers in a year you bought the, and you bought this property, you bought it for 10% equity, you gained another 10% and you're left with was a three, $363,000. Well, that's $63,000 more than what you bought it for. So you can sell this property and then you can make that gain. That's more than most of the people in the United States make in every single given year. And you just made that by living in a property. And if you're in the military paying 0%, if you're utilizing a first time home buyer's loan, like a three and a half to five percent down FHA loan, well, you're not you're living in this property basically for free three and a half percent to five percent on a three hundred thousand dollar home. That's ten grand. You can get a personal loan for that. And then wait a few months because there's some restrictions behind getting a personal loan and then paying on a property. But there's ways to do these things. And buying your first rental property in 2021 has never been easier. We're actually gonna go back over here into my presentation because I got off topic there for a little bit. Now that you have a mix of properties coming in, meaning you have some properties coming in and your email inbox for um, on-market properties, you, you're going to foreclosure.com. Again, link in the description down below. You're going to foreclosure.com, you're seeing some off-market properties. Well, now you need to know what your requirements are. You know, um, we need to go over to rentamere.com because if you're investing in a cash flow game, meaning, you know, if your your strategy is to get cash flow rather than appreciation, you're, you're needing $500 a month in cash flow rather than zero to hundred dollars in cash flow. Well, your strategy is going to look a little different. So we're going to actually go over here to rentometer.com to actually figure out the cash flow if this actually works for us. Well, let's let's just go to what was that? What was what was that pro that uh, property? Three two zero nine North Arcadia Street, I think. If I can remember that. Three two zero nine North Arcadia. Man, I can't spell. <laughs> uh, Arcadia, Arcadia Street, Colorado. I think it popped up. Did it? Yeah, it did. And over here, it doesn't even. The reason why I'm actually giving you rentometer.com and a link to rentometer.com is in the description down below. I'm giving you rentometer because it's literally the most accurate rent website that I've actually ever dealt with. Because if you go to Zillow, it's going to give you a, um, an estimate what the rent can be. Well, that's not always correct. Just like, you know, a Zestimate on Zillow.com. They're never right. But on Rentimeter, it's like been spot on and actually gives you a range that you can do. So we're gonna go over here to type in a thousand because it doesn't matter what you type in on uh, the rent because it's gonna give you a number either way. I think it was a three bed. We're gonna go over here. One and a half more uh, building type. It was a single family or a house. We're going to analyze this address. Let's see what it pops up. So actually, it's going to it can rent out for on average one thousand eight hundred and eighty seven dollars. And you can see all the properties over here that it's pulling from. You know, this property up here might be, you know, fifteen hundred dollars. This property in the red might be two thousand dollars. It's just taking all the averages and saying, hey, you can actually, you know, you can um, you can rent out this property for on average one thousand eight hundred eighty seven dollars a month. And so if you bought this property, uh, let's see, let's go back to it. If you bought this property for, let's just say the very minimum this person would take is $270,000, $270,000, um, depending on your interest rate and a bunch of other factors here in this market, you're going to be looking at maybe a $1,300 a month payment. And so without taking out a lot of the things that you take out whenever you're going to into rental properties, like all the expenses, well, if you're looking at it face value, that's $587 that you can be making in cash flow. That's a pretty good cash flow. So maybe now it's a it's a little bit more of a deal. And maybe this property even, you know, maybe it's fixed up nice. So you can get it on the higher end of this right here, the $2,100,000. Ah, whoa, whoa, no, $2,100. And that's another $300 going into your bank account. So it might be a deal now, but who knows? You got to dive in deeper for it. We talked a little bit about finding equity in the property, uh, finding your, you know, finding equity in your first real estate property. 
And so what we can actually do is ask the agent for a CMA. We touched on it a little bit, but I wanna show you exactly what I mean here. We're going to actually click the presentation button and we're going to say that property A is worth $200,000, property B, $150,000, property C, two hundred, dollars and property D, $100,000. Well, here is, what you, here is what the agent is going to do in a nutshell. They're going to take this, these four properties and they're gonna be like, okay, we're going to add all of them up and it's going to equal $650,000. Then they're going to divide it by the number of properties. And in this case, it's four, probably A, B, C, D, obviously it's four, and it's going to come out to $162,000. So if, you, if you're buying this property, uh, uh, not the property that we've been talking about on foreclosure.com, but if you bought this property for $150,000, just for an example, 150,000, well now this property is actually, you know, you can sell it reasonably based off of the data is $162,000. Well, that's, that's $12,000. That's a lot of money for a bunch of people. And if you can turn around and do that in a month, you just made $12,000 in a single month, buy the property, resell it for $162,000 or just sell it to another investor. And you just made $12,000 $12, in one month. So whichever game you're playing, if you're playing the cash flow game, if you want the most cash flow, and you don't really care about appreciation. Yes, you can get both. But it's not likely. Like in Orlando, Florida, you're most likely going to be able to get equity, or equity appreciation, and cash flow all in the same all in the same city. You can utilize all these different strategies that I showed you here today. And now that you figured out a property has equity in it, and if your if your strategy is to you know invest in cash flow, and this property has cash flow, or if you're investing for equity and appreciation and you find out that this property has equity and it's appreciation, it's appreciating nicely, you can then just call back your agent and be like, hey, I want to make an offer on it. And if it's an off market deal, here is the secret strategy that I want to uh, talk to you about how to buy real estate with literally none of your own money. There is going to be a link to Fund & Grow in the description down below. And what they do is basically give you fifty to $250,000 worth of business credit and they can teach you how to turn that business credit into cash so you can buy off market deals and on market, it doesn't really matter, but it's easier to buy off market deals and cash because you can get the best deal possible and they literally do everything for you you just call them you set an appointment with them and that's it that that's all there is to it there's gonna be a link in the description down below for that of course there are some other things that need to happen whenever you're you made an offer on a property and you got accepted blah 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 like inspections appraisals all this different things so if you want to see a video specifically for that process hit that like button and turn it blue. And there's gonna be videos popping up right here. I picked them out specifically for you and I really think you're going to enjoy them. So go check out those videos. Until the next video, I'm out, see it.